So patch 2.01 for Cyberpunk just came out, and it's really good news for players who are on the lowest back end of the hardware configurations. Now, I'm not going to read you all the patch notes and pretend it's content. I'll leave that to other people. I'll just focus on the two most important things. The first one being is that improves performance on all platforms, especially in Dogtown. That actually is the case. I did the benchmark and I did some in-game testing. And the second important thing is that on PC specific, improved image quality of the LSS ready construction in the ultra performance. And the image also looks a lot better on the lower setting here. Okay, first of all, let's take a look at the raw FPS. Now I did the benchmark test on the standard in-game benchmark. This was before the 2.10 patch, and this is the patch today. And this is the difference in FPS. But you see, in the ultra performance setting, you get on the average FPS gain, plus 12%. Minimum FPS gain is 73%. In the performance setting is also benefiting from it from 9 to 13 FPS uh, percent. Now balanced at the low end, 63% increase, but that's just the minimum FPS. What really matters is the average FPS gain. You get 8%, 9%, 10%. 10 so across the board, you get about, in the benchmark, 10% more performance. All of this is on the 1920 times 1080 resolution, and the configuration is a GeForce 4060 and an Intel i5. Now, in terms of full path tracing, that's sort of minimum medium spec, because path tracing is supposed to only be used on 470 at least, or 390. Okay, now let's take a look at image quality. Okay, now that's a screenshot which says 200 per for ultra, because I'm not sure when I took the screenshot if I had the ultra performance or the regular performance setting. I think it was the regular performance setting. And I took this about two weeks ago after 2.0 came out and before Phantom Liberty came out. And this screenshot I took today, same car, about the same angle, lighting conditions are slightly different. But in terms of image quality, they're comparable. Okay, now let's take a look. If we look at here, this area. Now at first glance, if you look from a distance, it doesn't look that different. But notice here the edge lines over here. See the jagged lines and the, the fairly the strong aggressive over sharpening of dark lines. Now you see the lines are completely straight. And this is on the lowest possible setting, ultra performance. But see, they got rid of the jagged lines and the extreme aggressive over sharpening is also gone, which made the game look like a bit like Borderlands if you played on ultra performance. So it's it's really a big improvement in image quality. And you get 10% more FPS on average, at least in the benchmark. Now, as for in-game quality, now this is currently me playing on the balance setting. Okay. And for me, the most demanding place in the game currently in the whole of Cyberpunk is around the pyramid, in the stadium, and around here. I, I got some mouse lag right now. You probably can't can't notice it because you know you're just watching the video, you're not playing it. So I got some mouse lag. But it's a lot better than it was before this patch. So I, I say the felt mouse lag in these extremely intense areas is probably gone by 70-80%. That's just the input lag I'm feeling with mouse. It is currently on a balanced setting, okay? As you can see, it looks nice. Now I'm going to switch it to the ultra performance setting. Notice the picture is still blurry. Notice here, virtually no mouse lag anymore. And this is like the most demanding place in the entire game. The image quality, it's slightly blurry, okay, but you still get the beautiful lighting quality. And that borderland over sharpening is almost completely gone. Like it still has that weird the JPEG compressed appearance to it, but it doesn't look over sharpened anymore. So overall, I would say it's a really good patch. Mouse lag is a lot reduced. Plus 10% performance in the benchmark. And even in the lowest ultra performance setting, you get a uh, much better picture. In the second part of the video, I'd like to talk about one more thing about the Unreal Engine thing. One of the leading developers of the game said something about that they're only making one DLC for Cyberpunk 1. Not because of some financial reason, not because the game didn't sell enough copies or the... the the um, DLC wasn't financially successful because uh, apparently it was. The reason was that they're going to switch to Unreal Engine. So I mentioned that as a financial reason. However, now consider this from Epic's perspective. 
they're basically getting the developers of Cyberpunk to make their next game on their in-house engine, on, on the Unreal Engine. Consider, what's the biggest, the absolute biggest open world game franchise you can imagine? The biggest one that sells the most consoles, and it's probably the most famous game that a lot of people play. So you might probably come to the conclusion it's GTA, the GTA franchise. Now, Unreal Engine probably cannot make a deal with Rockstar Games to, to flip the engine and just go to Unreal Engine because they probably have their big in-house thing going on. And now consider what they did here. They bagged the second biggest franchise because Cyberpunk is the second biggest thing in, in terms of hype and open world gameplay right after GTA. Okay, so they talked this developer into leaving this engine behind and going to Unreal. Now, it's probably a good deal. I think it, the next game is going to be a really great game on the engine. So I'm not turning this into a diss about the decision. However, consider consider the gigantic amount of money Epic Games has thrown at this game developer to do that. Because technically, it's like a console exclusive. Imagine the amount of work they put into this engine to make this game over. I think it took them eight years to make it, or ten years, much more when they started making it. And they're leaving all of this behind to use Unreal. So I, I'm not saying this as a diss against against the Epic Games of this game developer. I just want to imagine the um, the amount of marketing that was required. And on some level, I'm also sad about it because if they wouldn't have made the deal, we probably would get one or more DLCs uh, after Phantom Liberty because it's probably easier for this developer to just make another DLC for this existing franchise game with the existing engine tools, with the existing engine and all those things. If they use Unreal Engine, they have to do almost everything from scratch. Of course, of course they can copy over and, and transfer concepts and everything, but it, it's probably going to cause a delay. And financially, it would have made more sense for them to just make a new DLC, which means the financial incentive to drop this engine and use Unreal must have been so much bigger than just making new DLCs, which indicates it must have been a very large amount of money they got for us.